The New York Giants host Saquon Barkley and the Philadelphia Eagles on Sunday at MetLife Stadium. Which team will have the upper hand? We're going to break all that down for you on this crossover edition of Locked On Giants, Locked On Eagles, coming your way next. You are Locked On NFL Crossover, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. This episode of Crossover Thursday is brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on NFL and use the promo code locked on NFL written in all lowercase to win $50 instantly when you play $5. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Prize Picks, run your game. Hello, everybody. Welcome on in to Crossover Thursday edition, Locked on Giants, Locked on Eagles. I'm your host, Patricia Trainer of Locked on Giants. And of course, Eagle fans will recognize the gentleman on screen with me, Gino Camilleri, co-host of Locked on Eagles. And we are here to break down the New York Giants and Philadelphia Eagles. Giants Eagles week is always an exciting week. Mm -hmm. Uh, Even though right now in New York, we have some exciting baseball going on. Yankees and Mets both in the finals and uh, fine for a spot in the World Series. But Gino, still nothing like Giants Eagle one o'clock, you know, a classic, you know, NFC East showdown. Are you excited as I am about it? I'm really excited, especially because about this, the state of the Eagles right now, they need all the motivation to get this ship righted. And I think those division games, there's a little bit of extra salt and pepper on those games. You know, the first one of the season too, this has big repercussions. The Giants, even though they have those injuries, they're still in the thick of things. The Eagles, they aren't living up to expectations right now. And I hate going on the road, being a favorite, even if it's against a division opponent, those are the games that in the gambling world they call trap games where it's like, oh man, the, the Eagles, it looks good to, to, to go and get that bite of steak, but maybe people are sprinkling a little bit on the Giants with the injuries on the Eagles offensive line with Jordan Maialata at left tackle going out. It's kind of mirroring exactly what's going on in Giant land. So injuries, they're part of the game, but for the Philadelphia Eagles, I think the biggest story right now is can this offense get back on track. The game plan last week against Deshaun Watson from a defensive perspective, Vic Fangio did an excellent job. He sent a lot of pressure. He allowed his cornerbacks that have been very good in press man situations to stay up at the line, press, stay on their guy, stay in phase. Young rookie Quinion Mitchell is having the defensive rookie of the year performance so far. Darius Slay should come back healthy from injury. The pass rushers are starting to get it going. But the offense, in the words of Lane Johnson, it's constipated. It seems like this thing is stuck in neutral. They're almost stuck in the mud where half of the vehicle's out of the mud, the back half is in the mud, and they're saying, how do we get this thing out? The one thing that has been reliable, it's been running the football. Last week, it had to come through the air. The Browns defense does a really good job stopping the football, but I think all eyes are on this heavyweight matchup, which is Saquon Barkley returning to New York and he said it today that there's no bad blood between them. I don't believe him. He's that's just talk to the media and you don't want to put any bulletin board material out there, but I think all eyes are going to be on the first time he goes through the a gap. Somebody hits him in the mouth. They get up and start drawing. When does the first personal foul penalty come into play? I think there's going to be a lot of emotions in this game, but at the end of the day, if the Eagles offense doesn't get it going now, the back half of their schedule is a lot more difficult than it is right now. You play the Browns, the Giants. Luckily, it's a banged up team. You're going to see the Bengals soon. You're going to see the Jaguars soon. It starts right now. The offense has to get on track. If Jalen doesn't turn the ball over, they run the football and target those two guys and A.J. Brown and Devontae Smith. That's the formula. But Nick Sirianni runs a literal clown show right now, and we don't know how this thing is going to get back on track. All right, you know, I got to ask you something. Um, and I asked some of the Giant players today in the locker room about this, but I want to get your take. Jalen Hurts has been of late a turnover machine. Mm-hmm. What, why do you think that is? Is it just, is he confused by what he's seeing? Is he, is his timing off? What, what do you attribute that to? 
I don't think it has to go to the football intelligence aspect of it, like breaking down defenses. The one area where you can look at my point that I just said and say, okay, how has he gotten better in that regard? Well, against the Blitz, he's been fantastic. He's taken huge strides year over year to be able to see the field, hit his hot route, get that ball out to his first target. The issue comes when he holds on to the ball. If you look at those interceptions, a lot of them come when he holds onto the ball longer than three seconds because I don't know what it is when you put on a Philadelphia Eagles quarterback uniform, Carson Wentz, the guy before him, Jalen Hurts. Now they turn into this superhero and the superhero is the Hulk. And with the Hulk, you got to take the good with the bad. There's going to be destruction, but you got to be able to mitigate that destruction. Last week was the first step to that. No turnovers, no fumbles, no interception. They're able to win in that way. You're able to win with Jalen Hurts. The thing with him is that that scale, it can be tipped either way. He wants to be a guy that you can win because of, which can force him to push the pace. And then if he does that, there's some throws downfield where you're saying, hey, there's two guys on him, Jalen. Let's, let's not make that throw. We're in the red zone. We're throwing multiple turnovers in the end zone. I think there is some, I don't know if it's the confidence or trust between him and this offense right now, because Kellen Moore is not running his offense in Philadelphia. It's still Nick Sirianni's offense. And I think Jalen just wants to go and make plays out of structure because he doesn't believe in the foundations of it. But this is all a lot of skeptical talk in, in my opinion, but I truly believe Jalen Hurts from a football intelligence point of view, I think a lot of people kind of bash him in that regard, and that's not what it is. It's when he wants to be this superhero guy, and you see the Josh Allens of the world. You see these guys that live and die by that element. You have to take the good with the bad, but there's just been so much bad as of late that the good wasn't making up for it. Last week, the good did make up for it multiple big throws to your big time wide receivers, a late throw to AJ Brown on a fade route down, down the field on second and 11 with two minutes to go in the game, which I don't know why that was the call, but Jalen checked into it. He had the confidence there. So if they get back on track in regards of how Jalen hurts is playing, I think this whole thing can start to get back on track. Now, Gino, the Eagles have some injuries, particularly on the offensive side of the ball. Where are you most concerned about these injuries? You know, where, where could this potentially be a downgrade, if you will, a talent? I would definitely say the left tackle position with Jordan Maialata being out with his hamstring injury. The player that they have stepping up is Fred Johnson, who has been a swing tackle for this team. When Lane Johnson was out with a concussion, he came in against the Saints and did a pretty good job. He played that last game before the bye week as well. The thing with Fred, he's a very, very tall player. He's the tallest player on the football team. So guys like Brian Burns that can get low and use that leverage on those long arm type of moves, I think that's going to be where you have to put your attention. How are we going to deal with these stunts when guys like Dexter Lawrence and Brian Burns and the rise of Aziz Ojolari, how are we going to deal with that with Fred Johnson? Are we going to send a lot of help to his side? Something Jeff Stoutland doesn't like to do. He likes to leave those tackles on an island. But to assume that Fred Johnson is going to give you the same level of play that Jordan Maialata would and play it that exact same way, I think would be arrogant for this football team because the Giants' best pass rushing performance, I think you look at last week and if you look at that tape, you know that Jalen Hurts is going to be under duress. So they have to figure out a way to give Jalen at least that 2.2 .2 to two and a half seconds that he's going to need to counteract that left side of the offensive line. All right, folks, you are watching a special crossover edition, Locked on Giants, Locked on Eagles. When we come back, we're going to get caught up with what's going on in the land of the Giants. Don't go anywhere. This episode of Crossover Thursday is brought to you by the Arena Club. For most of us that like collecting cards, the idea of spending two grand or more on that rare, hard to find card just isn't feasible for many people, no matter how much they enjoy collecting. But thanks to slab packs from arenaclub.com, it's now possible to score gem mints for a fraction of their retail price. Arena Club is the only repack that provides real value, a complete view of all possible cards, and clear hit rates for each one. 
Arena Club slab packs are revolutionizing the repack game with transparency. After your pools are revealed, they'll immediately be placed in your showroom for safekeeping, selling, trading, or auction. The Arena Club grading process is accurate, fast, and transparent with a full grade rationale provided an explanation of how your card was scored. Whether you're buying, selling, trading, or displaying, Arena Club is the card collecting platform you have to check out. Right now, you can get 10% off your first slab pack on, or card purchase by going to arenaclub.com slash NFL and using the promo code LOCKEDONNFL. That's arenaclub.com slash NFL code NFL for 10% off your first purchase. This episode of Crossover Thursday is brought to you in part by Game Time. If you're looking for those hard-to-get tickets to shows, concerts, and sporting events, or heck, maybe you're even looking for tickets for this weekend's Giants-Eagles game, which is always a hot ticket find, look no further than to Game Time. Game Time makes finding the tickets you want faster and easier than ever and offers seats at competitive prices. With Game Time, there are no hidden fees. You're going to know exactly what you're paying for before you check out. You'll get clear images of your seat views, and you'll also get event cancellation protection. And if you find tickets elsewhere in the same section and row for less, Game Time will give you 110% of the difference. So go on and get the tickets you want. Just download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the promo code LOCKEDONNFL to get $20 off your first purchase. Download Game Time today. What time is it? It's Game Time. All right, everybody, welcome back to Crossover Thursday, Locked On Giants, Locked On Eagles. I'm Patricia Trainer of Locked On Giants, and he is Gino Camilleri of Locked On Eagles. And now it's time to get everybody caught up on what's going on in East Rutherford with the New York Giants. And, Gino, there's really a couple of stories we can talk about here, and I'm going to start with the biggest story, that being on the offensive side. Left tackle Andrew Thomas suffered a Liz Frank injury, had season-ending surgery on Wednesday morning, is done for the year, obviously. So now the question becomes, how do they try to replace him? And quite honestly, I think Brian Dable, the head coach of the Giants, said it best. You can't replace an Andrew Thomas. Because for as good as, you know, for for how Andrew Thomas was playing, and he'll, you know, he was always the first one to say that he's not having the season that he expects of himself. He's still the Giants' best offensive lineman. So now the Giants, they're playing around with some different combinations, but the most likely scenario is going to see Joshua Azudu, third-year man, step in for Andrew Thomas at left tackle because you just don't want to have to disrupt multiple positions on that line. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for those who are saying, well, what about Evan Neal? Evan Neal played, you know, on the left side when he was in Alabama. That was a while ago. And right now, Evan Neal, because he is so far behind everybody else because of, you know, the fact that he was unable to really practice during the spring, during the summer, I'm not so sure he's going to be an option for the Giants, in, at least for this week. So it's going to be Joshua Zudu. That is, you know, my best guess, just reading the tea leaves and talking to people in the locker room. And I know that doesn't exactly calm the nerves of Giant fans because we all know how, you know, shaky Joshua Zudu was last year. But in his defense, he was thrown into the mix without having practiced it a single snap during the spring and during the summer last year. So he basically had to step in, play a position at the pro level that he hadn't really done, and that was a recipe for disaster. Mm -hmm. This year, that is not the case. He's been working at, at tackle, both left and right side, since the spring. Hopefully is a little better equipped to handle that for the offense, which really, really is going to have a tough test against Sweat and uh, Huff, those two outside linebackers that the Eagles have. I want to stick on this point about the offensive line. If Andrew Thomas were playing, what would be the spot that you would be most worried about? Because we obviously know the elephant in the room currently. What would be out of the other four spots where you're saying we have to prevent this from happening or Daniel Jones is going to have a tough time operating. Truthfully, Gino, the, the pass protection has been pretty good. I mean, okay. that, not a whole lot of, I mean, yeah, you have a breakdown here and there, but you're not seeing jailbreaks at alarming rates. 
Um, they've been distributing the help a lot better um, with the tight end. Sometimes the tight end's on the right side. Sometimes he lines up on the left side and, you know, they've been keeping him into block. But I mean, if I had to pick a spot, I might go with maybe the right guard, Greg Van Roten. Um, okay. as being you know the weakest link on that line and and again that it's just such a small margin to be honest with you that you know because the offensive line believe it or not you know that was the big unit on offense everybody was worried about and they've been the least of this team's problems at least through the first six weeks so yeah I would say you know in the past pro maybe Greg Van Roten and then if you're talking run blocking maybe I would go with maybe uh John Runyon Jr. the left guard who historically has always been a better pass blocker than he has been a run blocker. So, you know, otherwise I feel good about the offensive line. Now I do want to talk real quick about the defense because a couple of injuries of note there, and this is important, especially with Saquon Barkley coming to town. Dexter Lawrence on the injury report did not practice on Wednesday because of a hip ailment. Brian Burns, who has been dealing with a groin issue, I think going back to week two, he did not practice. Now, both Dexter and Brian Burns, uh, they spoke to the media today, and they both said, I'm playing Sunday. And uh, I got each of them after the, the scrum broke up, and I said, okay, what's the real story? And they're like, I'm playing Sunday. Both of them said that. The question now becomes, though, how effective are they going to be, especially Dexter up front? Because the thing with Dexter is – you know, he's drawing the double teams, the triple teams, opening up one-on-one -on -one opportunities for everybody else around him to exploit. If he is compromised in any way to where he, you know, can be handled with solo blocking, and that's a big if, by the way, um, now it's going to be interesting to see what happens on the back end. And if the Giants, you know, how are the run fits going to happen? You know, are they going to be able to penetrate into the backfield, maybe put some heat on Jalen Hurts? Are they going to be able to keep him, in, you know, from killing them with their legs or with his legs rather? So those are the two injuries on defense that I'm most concerned about. Again, both players said they're going to play, but we all know how players are. They say mm -hmm. one thing and then the injury report comes out and it's like, oh, gosh, they didn't practice the whole week. Are they really going to play? Yeah, we saw that a couple weeks ago in Philadelphia, Lane Johnson and concussion protocol practices all week, but apparently you need to have a padded practice. If you are coming back from concussion protocol, he didn't have one. So he ended up being out for two weeks. Those ailments, especially on those big guys, I think Dexter Lawrence, if he's at 50% effectiveness and the Eagles can keep him at bay, that's got to be one of the things that they're hoping for. Because if Dexter Lawrence plays even above 50%, he's going to push Jalen Hurts off of his spot. Jalen Hurts does not like to step up in the pocket. Where he gets wild is when he can escape left and right. He's better going right, even though he had a nice little play to Jahan Dotson to his left side last week. But the thing is, how are those edge rushers? And you're talking about Brian Burns. If he plays, that's going to be the first time where I either get concerned or I have a little promise in this offense. Can Jalen Hurts get to the sideline, get to the edge beyond Brian Burns, or can Brian Burns in that massive frame track him down in the backfield? Because if they do a good job keeping Jalen Hurts into the pocket, he does hold on to the football. He is going to be a guy that has fumbles. You can force some interceptions on, but I never want to wish injuries on anybody, but Dexter Lawrence, he's going to beat up those guys on the interior, even if he is playing at 50%. But I can't wait to see that because it's going to be a nice little test the first time that Cam Jurgens, the new center for the Eagles, is taking on Dexter Lawrence next to Makai Becton, who is also new at right guard this season. Cam Jurgens never played next to Landon Dickerson. So you talk about that trio versus one guy. That's going to be a heavyweight fight that I think a lot of us are excited for. And then whatever the heck the plan is for Brian Burns, I do not know. Does he primarily rush? from the right tackle position. So it'll probably be him and Lane Johnson going at it. They don't move him around to like that left. Tackle Sometimes spot. they do. Sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's where I'll be intrigued as well. How do they move him around with that weakness of Fred Johnson being there? Because Vic Fangio does the same thing. He doesn't like to move his guys up and down the line. They're going to play one position, rush over the same guy. So fingers crossed. It's not Brett Brian Burns going against Fred Johnson come Sunday. 
And of course, I have to quick mention, because I know a lot of people ask about Malik Neighbors and where he's at, some good news or some encouraging news, I should say. Malik Neighbors, who has been in the concussion protocol for the last two weeks, he's still in the protocol, but he's in the advanced stages now, meaning he was able to practice on a limited basis. He has the red jersey, which of course is the non-contact jersey. So he's coming along. There is optimism that he should be ready to go, assuming he doesn't have a setback between Wednesday's practice and the time they practice on Thursday. Last week, they did have a little bit of a setback. They had to dial him back, but they're hoping that, you know, he's he's finally headed in the right direction to stay, and that's going to be huge for the Giants' offense. They really missed him last week in the, in the loss to the Bengals, you know, um, with not being able to, to get the receivers as open as they were. So mm-hmm. that's going to be a, a key uh, addition for the Giants if he is back. Would would you put the odds on him playing this weekend? I would say right now I would give it seventy percent. And if he oh, doesn't okay. have a, if he doesn't have a setback tomorrow on Thursday, um, I would I would up it to maybe ninety because that that means you know if they have to dial him back, then I get worried. But if he remains status quo and keeps going forward, then I would say the odds are pretty good that he will be back in the lineup on Sunday. I think so. all of us would love to see potentially the offensive rookie of the year go against the potential defensive rookie in the year. Two guys that are going to be in the NFC East for a long, long time. I would love to see Malik neighbors playing this game. I want the, the division games to be the best. So, you know yeah. what you are going against the next time you play this team, because there's been plenty of times where the Eagles face either a beat up giants team or a beat up giants team plays a beat up Eagles team. And that's never fun. You want to see the heavyweights go at it. I'm excited to see how these two QBs go at it, though. I know that Eagles fans aren't the biggest proponents of Daniel Jones. Giants fans aren't the biggest proponents of Jalen Hurts. But when they have their moments this season, it looks like both of them have shown out enough to push the ball down the field, give their offense a little bit of leeway, and the defenses are what are winning games for, I think, both of these teams right now. For sure. All right, folks, when we come back, we're going to have the keys to victory for both Team. So do not leave us. We'll be back in a moment. This episode of Crossover Thursday is brought to you in part by FanDuel. You could start the season with a big return on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play by play, and so much more, all on the very same page where you place your bets. And right now, you'll get started with $200 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place your first $5 bet. At last check, FanDuel had the New York Giants a three-point underdog for this weekend's game against the Philadelphia Eagles. Agree? Disagree? Visit FanDuel to get started. That's FanDuel.com to download America's number one sports book. All right, everybody, welcome back to Crossover Thursday, Locked on Giants, Locked on Eagles. I'm Patricia Chino of Locked on Giants. He is Gino Camilleri of Locked on Eagles. And Gino, give me your keys to a Philadelphia victory. Number one, Jalen Hurts cannot turn the ball over. You see the results when he holds onto the ball. They take care of it. He doesn't give the offense of the other team good field position. Hold on to the football. Number two, this Eagles defense, they need the New Orleans performance and they need the performance against the Browns. In those two games, they combined to allow the offense to score a single touchdown in both of those games. So they have to do that against the Giants team, which at home last week did not put up many points with their offense. And number three, the hidden points matter. Their special teams has been downright abysmal. At the end of the half last week, they kick a 57-yarder. It ends up getting blocked by Miles Garrett. All of a sudden, a 17-3 to game turns into a 10-10 to game. You cannot give teams, especially in a division game, multiple chances to stay in it. So the offense, defense, special teams, they all got to click. It seems simple, but every single week they seem to mess it up. And I still think it's because they do not have the right guy up top calling all the shots right now. Hey, hold our beer. We have the same problem. (laughs) Not that we we have the right guy at the top, but I'm saying as far as playing complimentary football, all three units, we definitely uh, can, have had problems they, with, with the Giants doing that. Can't um, have Thanksgiving dinner together. That's how I like yeah. to say it. They all got to yeah. sit at separate tables. Exactly. From a Giants perspective, obviously, 
they need Daniel Jones to play like the Daniel Jones we saw against the Seattle Seahawks. He was sharp, um, not many mistakes. Uh, and then he comes out against the Cincinnati Bengals and that whopper of an interception in the red zone. I mean, you just can't have that. So mm -hmm. score in the red zone that, you know, I call it the dead zone. It's Halloween's coming up. So we'll call it the dead zone because it's been spooky. <laughs> and for whatever reason, Daniel Jones gets spooked when he's down inside the 20. So we need better production production from Daniel Jones. Um, for the Giants to start scoring some points, you know, I mean, they've got this, this, this creative offense that Brian Dable's trying to run, but what good is it if you're not getting into the end zone, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So from a, from the other side of the ball, uh, this is going to sound very elementary, but Saquon Barkley worries me. He's playing well. He was always, you know, he, you know, he, you don't realize what you have until he's gone. Mm -hmm. And you go back and you look at the tape and he doesn't look like he's lost a step at all. And I have to believe he's going to come into the MetLife Stadium motivated. You know, he's got a lot of friends still, you know, amongst the coaching staff, amongst the players. But uh, I don't get the feeling there's any love lost between him and maybe Joe Shane, the general manager, because they couldn't get a deal done with him. So I think Saquon, you know, is going to come in here and he's going to want to show everybody, yeah, I still got it. This is what mm. you guys gave up. So uh, stopping him is going to be key. And, you know, the Giants, the run defense has gotten a little bit better, but you still have those breakdowns where the run fits aren't there or guys aren't maintaining, you know, the integrity. They're not containing. Mm -hmm. So I'm a little concerned about that, you know, guys getting washed out and, uh, or, or sealed off. Um, so I'm curious to see how that, that uh, how they defend Saquon because Saquon can set up so many things for the Eagles passing game. So if you can make the Eagles one dimensional, you might just have a chance of forcing a few of those Jalen Hurts turnovers that I know Eagle fans are hoping not to see on Sunday. Deshaun Jackson, when he left to go to Washington, had a quote that said, I don't care about the result of the game. I just want to go for 100 and a touchdown. And he did exactly that. I know Saquon Barkley did not have a quote, but he said one today that said, I could go for 300 yards or 10 yards as long as we win. And I think that's the biggest load of crap. I, I'm with you, Patricia. I would be worried about him too. He has not lost a step. If you do not maintain your rush lanes, it he might get stopped for a rush for two yards, three yards, go back for a negative one. But then all of a sudden he has one for 68 yards that puts you right back in the football game. And the Eagles, they win with their run game right now. There's no doubt about it. You have to stop Saquon Barkley if you want to win, and I think the Eagles have to get him going if they want to win football games. And it's going to come down to the quarterback taking care of the football, I think, at the end of the day. Whichever one does not have the turnovers, I think, is going to win the football game. And hopefully it's not a slop fest. Hopefully we actually get some good offensive performance and the defense tackles well, and we're saying, oh, okay, both teams played well. And at the end of the day, one comes out with a win, one comes out with a loss, but hopefully it's my Philadelphia Eagles because I do not want to go and talk to Lou if this team's three and three come Monday. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't have to worry about that since I go solo, but I don't want to have to come on and, and do another downer show like I did on Oh, Monday. they're the worst. I want to be positive. They are the absolute worst, and I feel bad for my listeners because every week it's like what's going on how do we fix this and it's the same thing you know it's like you know everybody's back on the get rid of daniel jones train mm -hmm. or do this that and you know at this point the roster is what it is i don't know yeah. how much more they can tweak it um at this point but uh yeah it would not be a good thing for the giants to lose to the eagles they did beat them the last time they met mm -hmm. um so there's hope and like you said nick sirianni is running the show and I'm sorry, Eagle fans, but that dude is just, wow. <laughs> yeah, if you want entertainment, the Eagles will provide that. That is for certain. <laughs> you should be watching this game for the entertainment value alone because <laughs> Nick Sirianni is going to do something that's going to make you say, what is this? This guy's a head coach of a football team. But the players are what we support, and I think they have what it takes to go get it done. And I think this is a little bit higher scoring than their last game was, and I think they're going to give the Giants some opportunities to push the football. And if you're over at FanDuel, I think go with the over. I don't know what the points total is right now. I'm sure it's around 46 or 47, but I think a lot of points are going to be scored, especially in a one o'clock window. Neither team is in prime time. They can just operate with Eagles fans and Giants fans watching. Nobody else, no stressors. 
but this is the first one of the year. NFC's matchups, nothing better. Best division in football. Hopefully both of our fans enjoy it. Let's hope for that. All right. That's going to do it for this edition of Crossover Thursday, Locked on Giants, Locked on Eagles. Again, I'm Patricia Trainer, Locked on Giants. He's Gino Camilleri, co-host of Locked on Eagles. Make sure you keep it on the Locked on Network. I'll have another show for you on Friday. I'm, I think I'm going to have a special guest for you guys. And Gino, of course, will be back with Lou as they continue to break down and get you ready for the big NFC East matchup, Giants and Eagles, 1 o'clock Sunday. We hope uh, you guys enjoyed the football game. And um, I'd like to say go Giants, but, you know, the Eagle fans, I'm, I'm sure are going to not appreciate that, but let's just hope for a good game. All right. So, all right. For Gino Camilleri, I'm Patricia Chena. We will see you on our respective shows tomorrow, everybody. Have a good one.